Hey, Pro Organizers, it's your podcast co-host, Melissa. We are back for another episode, and I got a lot of questions and a lot of emails about the podcast episode I did last week about your August to-do list, and I wanted to address a couple of those on the pod this week, give you a little bit of a mini, and then a couple of other things to think about, but I was really excited to see that people were interested in that episode, and I had a couple of people say, hey, could you do this every month? So I'm totally going to. I'm going to give you my to-do list of what I'm working on and then what I'm advising organizers to work on, but I'm glad it was helpful. But I did get a couple of questions from our Inspired Organizer group, and I wanted to address those because I think if one person has this question, then probably a lot of people have this question. So here's a question from one of our Inspired Organizers. What should the quality of Google business posts be? One of the things we talked about in the August to-do episode is getting a bunch of Google business posts up and loaded. This is a great question. And so my answer is when we are talking about Google business profile. It's basically a micro blog is what I call them. What I frequently say is quantity over quality on those posts. Obviously, I don't want you to put up just total whatever on there. We want you to put up something that really aligns with what we do as organizers. But if the choice is between getting every keyword proper and everything great on that versus getting an, a post up at all, I want you to just get a post up. If you want to just copy and paste something you've done on social media, that's what I do. I even go back to my social media for months and months before. You can cut and paste Instagram just fine. But a best practice for Google business, you can accomplish this by just adding a sentence or two at the end of your post, but it is adding a couple of your keywords and a couple of your geographic locations in there as well. What I have been adding to my Google business posts at the end is Home by 11 offers professional home organizing services, including decluttering and organizing in the Minneapolis St. Paul metro area or something similar. Sometimes I mix up the geographic locations, that type of thing. The other thing that I have been doing is, and it's based on an SEO podcast I listen to, I'm always trying to do continuous learning in my own business, is when you're doing a call to action. So there is a button that you can click that says learn more. I direct that now to a certain page on my website, like the services page or my contact page or my scheduling page, so that it has something direct to go to rather than just typically before I was adding it just to my homepage. So I hope that helps a little bit, but quantity over quality on Google business posts. I want you to get some posts up and I want you to get some photos on there. Your Google business profile needs, as I say, to be fed and watered occasionally. It's not just something that you put up once and you never touch again. Get that thing optimized and you're going to be so much better. So thank you for that question. The second question is one that I really love and I wanted to spend a little little bit of time on this. One of the things that I love to do is really get into some of the mindset things about having an organizing business. And I have to have these conversations with myself all the time too, just so you, th you don't think I'm doing it all perfectly all the time. I'm not. We're all a work in progress. But I had someone that asked me a really insightful question and I wanted to address it because it doesn't just go for this person's specific situation. I think it transcends for a lot of people and how they might feel about working with either a specific client client or a group of clients. So the question is, how should one go about positioning themselves for the back to school mom client when you're not a mom? This inspired organizer is not a mom herself. And so she said, I'm feeling a disconnect on how I can serve a mom without having tons of kid experience. While I know you don't have to be something specific in order to help someone specific, I'm just having a tough time with the mom client in my head. And I wanted to talk about this on the podcast because I really applaud this organizer for stepping up and saying this because I know that this is a question that some people have and I want to address a couple of different things. So the first thing, she has already covered this in her mind, so she doesn't need this, but maybe other people do. I have a lot of different clients that have a lot of different backgrounds and are very different people. So I don't know the specific life experience of my male client who is in his 70s and has eight grandchildren, but I'm very capable of helping him in his home. I also don't know what it's like to be my client who is a woman in her late 70s who lives 
lives alone and runs a community garden. I don't know what it's like to be my client who has three very young kids right now that she is trying to raise. I might know a little bit better what my client who has young kids that she's raising. I have a little bit of identification with her because I did that at one point in my life. But what I really want you to think about is I serve a lot of clients even though I'm not exactly like them. I want you to be able to have the confidence that you can go out and serve these clients even if you don't know every single thing about their experience. This is what I said in my reply and I hope this helps a couple people. So in the August to do episode I talked about it's back to school time for so many moms across the globe and that's a great time to concentrate on those moms as a typical client that we might have as organizers. I do know that even though I just gave examples of how I can't know what all my clients are going through I know that for some people the mom client is a hard one because if you don't have that experience you might have this idea that how can I help a mom if I'm not a mom. This organizer had a job she was doing actually in a facility that is a business. And I said, you're not in that business, but I assume you're doing a great job in that business because you're asking a lot of questions and you're really trying to get to the root of those people's problems. And while an organizer might have a little bit more of an intuitive sense of what a mom needs if they have kids themselves, I can tell you as a person who does have kids um, and my kids are teenagers, every mom I deal with has totally different needs for their kids than my kids did or than the person that I served yesterday. Every single mom and every single house you go into is going to have different needs for organizing and for systems and for what they need out of organizing. And it's about asking questions about how do your kids play? What do they play with? Do they ever have toys that they never use? How do they get dressed? How does your family work? You want to ask these questions so that you can give them those solutions. Even though you're not a mom yourself, that is totally okay. It's just like any other client. It's about asking them the right questions to get to the solution that works for them. I can tell you even as a mom, what works in house A for their three kids might be totally different than the solution I gave to house B the next day for their three kids. Every house and every parent and every guardian and every person that interacts with kids is gonna need something different. I wanted to throw in a side note. One time I had a client that I had suggested a solution to and it involved moving a piece of furniture and she looked at me like I honestly was a complete idiot <laughs> and she said I thought you said you had kids and I said I do have kids and she goes don't you see that if I move that furniture there the kids are going to use it as a trampoline and they're going to jump from here to there and then they might fall down the stairs and I just looked at her and I said no I, I didn't think of that because this client happened to have three small boys under the age of seven I had two daughters who were not particularly adventurous or anything and they were older at that time and so I was in a completely different phase of life and had completely different kids than this woman. She was sitting there going, wait, I thought you said you had kids. That's the dumbest idea that I've ever heard of. Just because I had kids doesn't mean that I'm going to give every client the perfect solution for them. So I just want to give you the confidence if you're in this situation, please don't be afraid of the mom client because they are an absolutely exceptional source of clients for an organizing business. What I think someone might be struggling with who's in this, in this kind of place is this concept that you won't have the appropriate knowledge to help a mom. And what I'm thinking about is, for all we know, you're going to have better solutions than someone like me who goes in maybe with some preconceived notions about, I had kids and this is what I did with my kids. Maybe you have spectacular ideas to share that are so much better than the ideas I would. In general, and this is with any client, if you go in with the knowledge that being the parent and the mom, especially of any aged kid is a challenge and what, any number of kids. So one kid is hard, two kids are hard, three kids are hard, six kids are hard. It's hard to be a mom, okay? And as long as you know that, and you know that there's a lot of chaos to manage, modern life, and obviously I can only speak for American life of school age kids, that's the world that I find myself in. It's a chaotic and it's a little bit stressful life. And if you as the organizer can go in and say, my job is to help you tame this chaos, reduce your stress, reduce your anxiety, help you get the kids out the door faster in the morning, help you get out the door faster in the morning. If you give them all of those messages about I'm going to make your life better, that's really what you need to know. 
it has nothing to do with whether you have kids yourself. You can still be the best organizer and your niche can be moms of small kids and you can just absolutely go out and slay that business. You absolutely can do it. I just wanted to give you that. I thought if I had one inspired organizer that was thinking about this, I probably have a lot of people in my audience. By the way, this goes for people like me who I'm out. I look at my neighbors across the street. They have three little kids, really little. And I look at them and I go, man, I have forgotten how to live that life. My kids are a lot older. So again, even as a mom, I still don't know what a mom of small kids is going through other than some vague memories of, man, I was really tired all the time. So if you're sitting here and maybe you are an organizer who your kids are in their 20s and they have flown or you don't have kids at all or your kids are at a totally different stage you might be struggling with this too and I just want to remind you it's like any other client it is all about asking questions and getting to the root of what is going to solve their problem all right I really love talking about organizing, like actually organizing. I still actively organize with clients. If you looked at Pro Organizer Studios social media, I actually had a reel up last week. It was so hot in Minneapolis and I was working in a garage. I put up a sweaty reel of just a couple tips that I had about garage cleanouts, but I still work with clients many times a week. And it is really one of my passions to be able to help people help their clients better. And that is why I created our course, which is called Organizing Essentials. It is open again now for enrollment for a very short period of time, less than two weeks. And this is an amazing community of women. We have over 300 women in this group, and we have a live Zoom coaching call every month to talk about client situations. We have, whether it's psychological, whether it's personal, whether it's anything, we have dealt with every issue in that Zoom, and we have a lot of fun. I have just added some brand new modules too. So we have 12 modules total, and one of the modules that I just added is about closet design and about buying product for client. We've done some revamping of that content. So if you are in a situation where you're like, man, I am trying to figure out the buying stuff and what organizing tools are the best for clients, we talk about that a lot too. So everything from the psychology of working with clients all the way through, hey, how do I invoice a client for all of the stuff I bought them? Or what are the best bins that you guys find at XYZ store? So we have a little bit of everything. I would absolutely love for you to join us. It is $249 for lifetime access, no other charges. We do have a payment plan if you need it. By the way, a little tip that I heard from someone, PayPal is doing a pay in four option. So you can do the pay in full option and you still get four payments. So that's an awesome thing that you can put down and it's a business expense. So I would absolutely love to have you join us. I will put the link in our show notes of how you join us. It's a great way to meet other people in the organizing industry. All right. So I'm going to be back with a little bit more content later this week, but until then, I hope you guys have an awesome week organizing. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please email me hello at proorganizerstudio.com. And I hope you have a fabulous day.